<laughs> it's been so long since we've done a WAN show on site like this. It's the Thai WAN show, guys, and okay. I'm absolutely here for it. Someone pointed out in the full plane chat that this is actually just a Starforge logo. Yes. So it's, it's okay. It's a hammer. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hammer. <laughs> It's a hammer and it's right between our heads. I am <laughs> so sore right now and so tired. Guys, as tired as I look, that's how tired I am. I've actually spent more time playing badminton than actually like I think we got if if we if we collected the amount of hours we slept last night, we had one full night of sleep. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. pretty it was pretty rough. Yeah. I played for like 5 hours yesterday and this is really bad. I, I realized when I got a group chat this morning from the, the center back home that I'm actually signed up to play badminton on Saturday again. Which is which is tonight. Which is tonight, but also I go back in time when I go home. So it's like far from now tonight, but yeah. I have played every day. Um, Do you think you're going to crush when you go home, even though you're sore because you're like so warmed up against good players? Um you saw me try to go downstairs last yeah night. but i saw you try to go downstairs the night before as well yeah and then you found a way to play yeah so i got injured on the first day um if <laughs> you see played through it <laughs> i still played every day uh so what would happen was i would heal a little bit at night and then i would spend the day walking around the show floor like hobbling hobbling around. hobbling around the show floor you know like i fake it pretty well on camera so anything other than the gigabyte booth coverage and the uh what was it floor systems mm -hmm. i'm like uh uh and uh so if you look at if you look closely at the montage of me running when we did the video in the uh, Super Micro booth where we had to like go on a fetch quest to mm. get a replacement CPU and RAM for this blade server. If you look closely, I am like heavily limping in that video. So I would hobble around the show floor and then I would go play badminton, injure myself to the point of barely being able to lift my leg out of an Uber to get out of it. <laughs> and then I would do rinse and repeat the entire trip here i've actually had a lot of fun it's been really great it's been so long since i've been in the thick of things and you know what it's funny because i've been seeing a lot of comments from people that are like yeah linus seems better he seems like he's having fun or he seems like he's he's chilled out or he seems like whatever you know if the content's going to be like this when the new ceo comes in i'm here for it and at first i was like that seems stupid. Uh, no offense, because you know one of the videos that had a lot of comments like that was actually the hundred thousand dollar Minecraft PC build for Carl Jacobs. We shot that video like three months ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, I saw a bunch of videos about that on our cleaning video as well, and I was like, hmm. Uh, comments about that, but yes, oh, sorry. yeah. What did I um, say? You said you saw a lot of videos about it. <laughs> yeah, he's tired too. We both went out for beef noodle soup at like 2.30 in the morning last <laughs> night. Because that's a smart thing to do. It was worth it. It was good soup. It was really good soup. Yeah. Um, anyway, at first I, I was thinking to myself, okay, these guys are just looking for something. But I got to say, I, I felt creatively liberated at the show this year cool i didn't feel like i had to just do traditional booth coverage and honestly i didn't want to because i could have uploaded the same thing we would have uploaded at computex four years ago but i feel like the channels come a long way since then i feel like the community expectations have come a long way since then and i feel like the industry has changed a lot since then i will talk about the the pool thing i know that's our headline yeah. topic but yeah. I actually want to talk about this other topic first. And this was almost going to be a rain walk video. I might still write it up and shoot it before we leave, but I, I want to talk through some of the thoughts that I had just here on the WAN show because you guys probably noticed, right? We shot almost nothing this year in, uh, in terms of PC gaming, like for the LTT channel. I mean, Noctua had, has that really cool offset 
uh, mounting bar thing. So you can you can drop your temperatures a little bit on AM5 CPUs by by actually moving the cooler down to where the CCDs are under the IHS. And other than that, our first video was NVIDIA's Grace Super Chip and Grace yeah. Hopper data center. Our second video is Floor Systems Cooling, which, okay, if this matures the way that they think they can, wow, it's going to be an absolute game changer for gaming laptops. Yeah. But if the view rates on laptop videos are anything to go by from you guys, I'm, I'm thinking you mostly care about desktops. And I just... I, I don't see this technology making its way into the desktop in any yeah, me neither. realistic amount of time. Like just from a cost perspective, it won't make sense because you don't need the benefits. You don't need the size benefit. So why are you paying for it, right? Um, the Nocto cooler. Oh, right. Then Supermicro. Supermicro was one of the other really interesting things at the show. Uh, these, these microblade servers. Did you watch this video? No. Okay. These are super cool because instead of using server CPUs, they're just Ryzen's. And so instead of going multi-socket, they're just blades with full Ryzen PCs. So it's a 3U okay. rack with eight full computers in it. And you can put up to Ryzen 7950 X3Ds. So if you wanted to do like a, a high performance game server, like, like top tier single threaded performance, this is it. And you can still, you know, slice them up and virtualize them because, I, you know, it just occurred to me. Why not? I don't think we're grateful enough that virtualization for, I, I, that would, this would be a really interesting thing to dig into in a tech quickie or something like that. How did we end up with proper virtualization support on the desktop? It is kind of surprised that hasn't been a gated feature at some point. Well, I think it was at some point. Oh. I think in the early days it was like, I'm trying to think like SRIOV, I don't think was something that even if it was supported by the CPUs, I think motherboard manufacturers weren't implementing it into the into their BIOSes. I know ILMMU is something that has matured a lot over the last 10 years. Oh, okay. So it's been a minute, but yeah, like Intel Core 2 Duo apparently had some issues. With okay, yeah. Virtualization being locked off. Yeah, so there you go. The fact that we ended up with that is kind of a miracle when you look <laughs> at the way that it didn't happen with GPUs. Um and to be clear, there has been stuff at the show this year that is gamer focused. I mean, uh, we've got a short that I shot for Short Circuit on Asus's Concept GPU that moves the 12 volt power off of the top. Uh, so there's yeah. no cable and it's just got a finger on the bottom. But I feel like a lot of noise was made about how innovative that was from people who don't cover Mac. Mm. Because when Apple launched the, the latest cheese grater Mac Pro, that's exactly how they did the power for the GPUs in it. And it supported cables. So it had uh, female connectors on the motherboard and you could buy a, a cable kit. So you could plug like a, a non first party GPU into it. And you could, could power it that way, but it just had a slot an ex extended slot at the back and you plugged it in like that. And that was how it was powered. And I'm sitting here going like, I mean, is that really, is that really gaming news then? Uh, a, a couple brands showed off even bigger 4090s. Uh, Sweet. That's what we need. <laughs> nice. Uh, so Cooler Master did. And then uh, this wasn't in our Computex roundup here. It's not in our notes. But um, Asus also did when I popped by. They, <laughs> they have a mock-up of a Noctua Edition cooler that has 140 millimeter fans on it. <laughs> Noctua's new 140 millimeter fans. So it probably performs like a hot damn, but it is absolutely colossal. We're going to have a tweet going up with just like your classic, I'm holding a regular size GPU and I'm holding that one, you versus the guy she tells you not to worry about, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but really the big news, the big innovations were in the data center, were in, you know, mobile, um intel showed nothing for a consumer desktop yeah amd showed nothing for consumer desktop nvidia showed nothing for consumer desktop 
When was the last time that that happened at Computex? At Computex? Yeah. Yeah, that's rough. And not even consumer desktop. I mean, we're not even seeing, we're not even seeing, uh, there's hints, there's hints that there's a new Threadripper coming, but is it gonna be a Threadripper for enthusiasts or is it gonna be Threadripper Pro, which is priced for professionals and is not really gonna be applicable to gamers at all anyway, because the motherboards are gonna cost $1,300 like we've seen with the current Threadripper Pros. Yeah. Um, Curious Brad says, I'm so sick of NVIDIA this, NVIDIA that. I want to see the competition rise up. You gotta give you gotta give credit to NVIDIA though. They they just keep kind of they keep kind of killing it. I and guess I'll, I'll also throw a shout out to Intel. They're yeah. trying. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're trying. On it. Those it's, price cuts recently are actually like really compelling. Yeah. $199 for an A750. Yeah. Like that's actually crazy. I know it only has eight gigs of VRAM, guys, but like, it's two hundred dollars. Yeah, like that—that's freaking awesome. That's actually wild. Competition's back, but it seems to be between Intel and AMD. Yeah. At the low end. Yeah. Because I mean, Nvidia comes in with the forty sixty. Okay, we're gonna talk about Nvidia in more detail later, but um, you know, first I want to I want to talk about you know, this. This this kind of this topic that I wanted to discuss, which is like PC gaming's kind of in trouble. Um, um, yeah, 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 is it up, PC or... gaming or is it PC gaming hardware enthusiasts? Well, I think it's a little bit of I think it's a little bit of both, right? Because there's a lot of excitement for you know higher fidelity graphics, for example, and for you know game design that pushes the envelope and you know whether that's in-game physics or whether it's you know much larger scale multiplayer or whether it's right. like there's lots of different things that are not just more eye candy yeah faster gpu right and one of the observations that i made at the show is that a lot of the really exciting stuff that's happening right now is in the data center and more worrying that data center tech is not the kind of thing that I am expecting to trickle down to gamers in a meaningful way. And so I want to kind of explain what I mean by that. In the past, we saw innovation, like, like there's always been this, I shouldn't say always been, but there has traditionally been this trickle down. So when multi-core, was a big push in the data center, yeah. uh, you know, back especially when software was uh, licensed per socket, right? All of a sudden, there was this push to have more and more cores per socket, right? And then when performance per watt was a big push in the data center, all of a sudden we saw efficiency gains. gaming brands talking about how important efficiency was for your new gaming CPU. Which has been great because power prices in a lot of places around the world are like through the absolute roof right now. But right now, what we're talking about is accelerators. Uh, we're talking about, I mean, AMD launched that really cool looking I, you know, video encoding accelerator. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? When talking about things like AI accelerators and whatnot, though, I do think that's actually going to trickle down. Well, because we're well, talking about we're talking about things like, okay, not in the gaming space, but there's that talk recently about the generative AI that's in Photoshop. Yes. That's actually pretty big. Okay. And then I do believe there's going to be games that like, you know, procedurally generated game styles, where it's procedurally Ooh. generated through AI accelerated tasks. But tell me this, will that AI make its way to your local processing in a meaningful way? Or will that generative AI be done in on a in a cloud server somewhere? I actually genuinely think it's going to be both. You think it will be both? Because I think there's going to be single player games that have procedural generation built into it. And they can use your local processing to do it. How are the games rating organizations going to rate a game? That has be rough. real time generated content in it, especially with AI's ability to just like screw up, yeah, <laughs> hallucinate, just do the wrong thing. Because you can you can put like bumpers, but it can also just go around it or find alternatives. So that that's going to be 
Interesting. All right. Well, you're getting ahead of me a little bit here, but I was going to point out that some of the things that we're seeing in the data center space right now are just plain not beneficial to consumers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, PCIe Gen 5. This is going to be kind of an unpopular take, I think, but I fully support that both NVIDIA and AMD, and actually, I guess, Intel for that matter, all delivered their latest gen GPUs with PCIe Gen 4. We clearly, obviously just like don't need it do not need double the pcie bandwidth for our for our gaming gpus and then you know storage storage is another area where brands are pushing pcie gen 5 really hard but we've shown and other publications have shown time and time again that the benefit to pcie gen 5 to, to faster storage in general for gamers is basically nothing now could that change um, and then, right, the last point I was going to make is that it's all about accelerators now. So whether it's video encoding accelerators from AMD or whether it's uh, AI accelerators or whether it's, um, you know, oh, like network accelerators. NVIDIA was really excited about this, this network accelerator they were showing off that has a 16 core CPU on it or something like that. Um, yeah, there were comments on the video like... <laughs> <laughs> NVIDIA's new network card has more compute cores on it than my entire household, <laughs> yeah. you know? Um, and it's really cool technology. But we look at how long gigabit was the standard for consumers. And I'm sitting here going, is encrypting your network, is offloading network traffic encryption really going to be something we're going to see on a desktop computer in the next 10 years, 15, 20 it's hard to look that far ahead, yeah. but I kind of doubt it. And so I'm looking at all these innovations. So PCIe Gen 5, even in the data center, a big part of it is simplifying board layouts and making them more economical. So you know, taking an SSD and giving it two lanes of Gen 5 instead of four lanes of Gen 4 and getting that same bandwidth. And I think we're going to continue to see that moving into, into Gen 6. And so we may not even see consumer platforms adopt Gen 6 just over the over the power consumption limitations, or we might see it, them use Gen 6, but just use fewer lanes for everything as opposed to actually making things faster. Now, where I wanted to kind of pivot the conversation is to talk about and speculate how we could see these technologies being beneficial to consumers. I mean, one area where faster storage is supposed to help right, is um, direct storage. Yeah. But we've seen a couple of direct storage games and it hasn't really made a difference. No. So what's, what's the deal with that? Is it just that these games were not developed start to finish enough around fast storage hardware? Yeah, I think there's also the like early adopter thing. Like, you know, when a console first comes out, look at... Um... Tears of the Kingdom yeah. versus the first one, Breath of the Wild. Like the the there was pretty significant improvements that happened there, as far as my understanding goes. If you actually happen to play it on a Switch instead of emulating it, uh, um, but, but like they're going to get better at using it over time. But there also needs to be incentives for these devs to have to like work harder to actually do that. Mm -hmm. There's there's conversations going around recently about how like. Developing for the Switch is where you're seeing pretty much all of the effort going into being efficient with things. You can see PC games coming out, they're like 140 gigs. Yeah. It's just like, oh, yeah. Okay. So they did, yeah, I don't know. We'll see it happen, but. Okay. What else could we use faster storage for? I mean, that's always been something that's been kind of baffling to me. You know, when I'm, uh, you know, performing some some simple operation, my CPU is sitting at 4% usage, my RAM's barely touched, and my supposedly, you know, 7 gigabyte a second SSD is pinned at a, at a, at 100% and like, uh, I'm not even doing, I'm not even doing that much. Um, you know, it realistically is the limitation always just going to be the controllers and the NAND flash as opposed to the pipes to them. But let's say, let's say they can build faster flash and, and we reduce that bottleneck. Uh, you know, what would we do with faster storage? So direct storage theoretically would allow us to do PS5 type things where you're streaming game data directly off of the SSD, um, like streaming textures. Um, 
I'd like to see I'd like to see an Xbox like resume, but not just from suspend, from like hibernate. Is yeah. there any reason? Oh god. Is well no, think about it. No, I love the concept. I just Windows and sleeping. I it's, know. <laughs> but look it's a great concept though. <laughs> yeah, we're no, we're we're having we're 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 thinking optimistic. Yeah, yeah, today. yeah, yeah. No, it's great. <laughs> Turn off that pessimistic, <laughs> cynical brain of yours and think of what we could do with faster storage. Hit me, guys. Oh, I do like that a lot. Being able to sleep your computer in the middle of heavy tasks like gaming or potentially whatever else, and come back to it and have it actually resume in the middle of it would be would be cool. Fire simulations. Guys, um, I mean, I guess. Yeah, there's not a, there's not a, oh. This we could a... store things faster. What a, what a comment. Amazing. <laughs> oh, discussion question. Handyman over on Floatplane Chat asks, uh, have I buried the hatchet with Jensen from NVIDIA? Mm. Um, I actually do have an update on that, so I can, I can talk about that a little bit but i'm worried i think you're right i think ai ai games are are going to be they're going to have a moment and then they're going to go away because they kind of sucked oh yeah they're all going to be really bad the and then we're going to find ways to implement it into handcrafted games and it's, it's going to end be up really being I, I suspect the early ones it's going to be like a selling feature of the game yes it's going to be like cgi in movies yeah. Right. Where it starts out as doing CGI for the sake of yes. doing CGI. Yeah. And then it turns into, you know, Wolf of Wall Street. Have you ever seen the side by side of Wolf of Wall Street shots before and after CGI? Watching the movie, you wouldn't even know yeah, I wouldn't how have there was any CGI heavy this film is. Wow. But there's like this, there's this helicopter shot of his beach house. And other than the house itself, like the surrounding area looks nothing like the original shot. They just, and there's this doorway that he walks through and it's on a basically completely different building. Um, and I'm oh, just looking weird. at it going, was that, necessary? was that really necessary? <laughs> but, but it was integrated in such a way that I didn't notice it. I wouldn't have noticed it all. And so if that was the director's vision, then great. Yeah, like right? I suspect there's going to be some AI procedurally generated dungeon crawler, which exists purely because it is what I just said. Well, what's funny, it's funny that you say that because the procedurally generated levels were a major selling point of Diablo 1. Yeah. Um, and so we might see better that, but it's going to be worse in certain ways. Oh, yeah. Almost certainly it oh, will yeah. be worse in certain ways. Because it's like going to generate something that like, the, the word for it is similar to something else. So it ends up spitting out the wrong thing and all this other problems are going to happen. But yeah, I think we're going to go too far at first and then it'll fall back. And then when it starts to come back and properly, I think it'll be in ways that you don't necessarily notice a ton. But yeah. So I, honestly, with that timeline, I think we're like pretty significantly far out. 